Hello. Now, recently, you might have noticed I've posted quite a lot of Robocop content. That's because I've just come off the back of doing some promotional things for the new Robocop Rogue City game, which was a totally amazing experience. Now, when this opportunity presented itself to me, I had my Robocop suit that I made a couple of years ago, and I thought to myself, if I'm going to do something that's, you know, official for the actual game, I want my Robocop costume to be the best I can do it. So I set about improving a few things. And this video is just going to focus on the changes I made from my first version of my Robocop suit to what you've seen in my recent videos. So as before, I used Bro Navarro's Robocop Pepper Cure files. So this whole costume was made in my living room and as I made each piece, I would just try them on and film a little thing to make sure they fit correctly. So a lot of this is going to be me wearing various parts of the suit while in my dossing around shorts or trousers or maybe even my boxer shorts if you're lucky but there you go that's the uh, luxurious life of a maker so this is me testing out the shins and feet make sure they look correctly and me wandering around my kitchen wearing the legs I will always finish the entire suit before I do any details or add any paint. That's because if the parts don't fit correctly, you can always trim things and make adjustments. Uh, whereas if you add the details or the paint, you're just going to ruin that and have to redo it anyway. Now, the elbows are hinged with some plastic I added on the inside and then some locking thread uh, bolts. That's to keep them lined up properly so they can't slip and slide around. The midsection is elasticated, so I've got flexibility and I can bend left, right, forwards and backwards. This is just me testing out a few poses, make sure I can do all of the poses that I would want to do while in the costume, especially while holding Robocop's weapon, and making sure I can walk and the parts don't rub where they're not supposed to. So the idea was to just neaten up a few things and to slim down some areas, especially the thighs, as I wasn't going to add the thigh holster to this one. It's quite funny how things work out. So I've added some details here to the body and upper arms, just again checking that the movement is still there. This is the first of the uh, silver paint that I applied. This is just acrylic paint that I brushed on. It's me checking the clearance of the chin guard to the upper chest. So the helmet base shape, I have to go through three helmets so I've got the size right. And put about five chin guards, so it's a fit as snug as I could get it silver paint and then this is with the blue and purple highlights and some lacquer makes a massive difference so the whole suit is now fully painted up and at this stage I've also added in the sound effects if you look at my left hand you can see my finger moving triggering the buttons to make the sounds work now in my previous video, when I first showed the sound effects working, some people were asking why I didn't add again. motion sensors or something similar to the feet to trigger the sound effects. And there's a couple of reasons. The main one being, I don't always want the sound effects to be on. If I'm just like somewhere where there's no one to kind of show the sound effects off to, what's the point of it running down the batteries? And two, I want the sounds to, to trigger at the exact right time and a, a sensor in the foot might not always work so I've opted to add the buttons to the left glove and the index finger triggers the footsteps and the middle finger does the mechanical noises so I can have them go off as much or as little as I want. This is the holster on the left is being triggered by just the RC board on the right and it's now been fitted into the glove and it's the other two fingers for open and close. This was the first test I did while wearing the leg. The leg opens and closes with two motors and a very simple hinge system. And I use magnets to hold the gun in place. The reason I didn't use a regular holster system is because doing that, I would run the risk of maybe not putting the gun all the way in or putting it in a funny angle, and that could then prevent the leg from closing up. So using magnets, it will ensure that every time I put the gun in, it holds it in exactly the right place every time. If you listen here, you can hear when it grabs onto the gun. And I can hear that while suited up, so I know when it's okay to then close the leg. I will do another video showing in great detail how the leg actually works. For now, here's me at MCM Comic Con in London having an amazing time at the Robocop Rogue City stand.
One thing I'm particularly proud of is the fact that I can actually twirl the gun before putting it in the holster. This has been a cosplay dream of mine ever since I wanted to make a Robocop costume. So actually being able to do Robocop's signature gun twirl and holster is really cool. So there we go, new and improved Robocop done. Um, I say new and improved, it's more new than improved. The original plan was to just improve a few things. I actually ended up remaking everything. So I've got two Robocop suits now. Uh, the first one I made, I oversized the thigh slightly to make room for the gun and also oversized the uh, torso as well to keep them in proportion to each other. And I tried to make the holster and failed. So I just glued the, the leg up and had it without the holster. And then when the opportunity came along to do the trailer for Rogue City, I was like, okay, if I'm going to be in the trailer, I want it to be as true to you know, the original Robocop as possible. I want to slim it down slightly. So the plan was to just skinny down the thighs, skinny down the torso. But one thing led to another and I thought, you know, what the hell, in for a penny and for a pound, I might as well remake the whole thing. So I did that and as I was trying it on, I noticed the thigh was a little bit loose. I was like, I wonder. So I got the, the gun, tucked it into the thigh while I was wearing it. I noticed there's still a tiny bit of space in there. And I was like, that, that thigh holster might still work. And as it happens, it, it kind of did. So how crazy is that? Now, does my costume look exactly the same as the one used in the film? No. While I'm wearing it, am I the same size and proportion as Peter Weller was? No. But did my costume cost millions of dollars and take months and months and months to make? No, it didn't. So my costume, I like to think, isn't the perfect Robocop costume. In fact, as my channel's called, I'd say it's perfectly imperfect. And that's good enough for me. And as it happens, it was also good enough for MGM. That's why I was approached to do their live action trailer to promote their game. And surely there is no higher praise than the company that own the actual rights of the character you're portraying using you in official promotional material. So that being said, surely what I've been saying for years and years is also true. And that is that you don't have to be great at making to make something great. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.